So it is. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chris St. Tumians. I'm a zoning administrator, and it's 1030, and I'm calling this meeting to order. The first item on the agenda is approval of uh, the May 16th, 2024 draft minutes. Uh, the minutes for May 16th are approved as submitted. Number three is for public comment. So we are taking public comments on non-agenda matters. This is a time when a person may address matters and not listed in, on the agenda that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. So if you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. And so this is for items not on the agenda. <laughs> yes, sir. And the piece. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you would like to make a comment, please, please let me finish. <clears throat> if you'd like to make a comment on an item not on the agenda, now's the time. So if you have an, if you'd like to make a comment, please raise your hand. Okay. What's on the agenda? If you provide a copy of the agenda, there are plenty over on that. I'm yes. yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I will close public comment and we'll move on to the statement of purpose. The zoning administrator is appointed by the planning and economic development director and has the responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the design review board, cultural heritage board, planning commission, or city council as applicable to the decision all actions taken by the zoning administrator may be appealed within 10 calendar days. If the final day of the appeal period falls on a non-business day, the appeal period will be extended to the next business day. So moving on to the first scheduled item, which is 6.1. Um, it's a public hearing uh, for uh, Planet Fitness located at 551 Summerfield Road. And our presenter, uh, Planner Hartman. Thanks. Thank you, Zoning Administrator Tumians. My name is Ann Hartman, and again, I'm the project planner for this application, uh, or I should say for a minor conditional use permit application, as well as minor design review application for the project located at 551 Summerfield Road. So the minor conditional use permit and design review is for a new health and fitness facility, also known as Planet Fitness. Um, with also proposing extended hours of operation. Um, and you can see the hours of operation that are proposed here on the screen. Um, and they are also um, proposing some exterior modifications to the front building facade um, at that current building. So the, this is just an aerial view of the building, uh, which is located in the Montgomery Summerfield uh, Neighborhood Shopping Center. The general plan land use designation is retail and business services, and the zoning district of the property is neighborhood commercial, which is um, the zoning district that is applied to areas within and adjacent to residential neighborhoods appropriate for retail and service centers for convenience shopping. And uses in these centers are intended to provide for the day-to-day -day needs of local neighborhoods and workplaces. These are some existing uh, elevations of the building, which is currently the Summerfield Cinema. Um, from some digging that I looked at, it looks like the original use permit for this cinema um, can date back to 1988. Um, and it was under there, it was named as the Son Sonoma Motion Picture Company. Um, I would also just like to reference though that there is no historic um, relevance with this building. This, this was a shopping center that was built within the 60s. I couldn't get the exact time range, but there's no historic district within this property. So I just wanted to uh, make that a preference as well. And this is just kind of a drawing of the existing elevation. This is the proposed elevation of Planet Fitness. Uh, and this is the only uh, facade that is changing, the rest of the building um, is proposed to remain the same. So there were quite a few comments that um, were received by city staff, um, an overwhelming amount, uh, obviously in support of wanting the cinema to remain. Um, and I did wanna just kind of, I wanted to, 
talk about a little bit of the role of um, at least the city planner's role uh, for this processing this application. Um, we as a city staff can't control when a property or I should say a specific business is closes or opens. That's not what we oversee. We oversee an applicant that comes in proposing a use at a location and we see whether it is permitted um, within that zoning district or whether it's not. Um, and this use, this gym is permitted within this zoning district by obtaining approval of a minor conditional use permit. So I do want to, I wanted to just make that clear that we can't control what happens to, you know, private business on a private property. Um, we just oversee the uses that are that are stated within our zoning code of what's permitted in these zoning districts. Um, and if you kind of want more information of what is permitted in these zoning districts, I'm definitely happy to discuss that, you know, after this meeting. Um, I did leave my card on the table as well, um, if you would like more information on that. Um, I also, there also seemed to be quite a few comments that um, talked about wanting to vote no on the uh, application. And I, I also just wanted to clarify that there's no uh, public voting on this matter. It's very much, it's to provide comments on the design and the use that's coming in. Um, and the voting, well, I guess I should say, it's just the final decision is made by the zoning administrator. For already approved this permit. It's not, it's not approved. I, I do respectfully ask that I'm still at my presentation. Um, you will have time to provide public comment. Um, but I just wanted to provide clarity with the amount of comments that I did see. Um, and a lot of them were, you know, saying, like, vote no, we help save the cinema. And I, I just wanted to reiterate, you know, what my role was with, with this. Um, and we also, I do believe we have the representative for the landlord here today. Um, so there, if there are questions, there, there, there could be like a little uh, summarization as well after my presentation. Um, so this project, um, oh, and staff, I should, I guess I should, the staff analysis did conclude that um, all of the findings for both of the design review and use permit could be made. The project is categorically and statutorily exempt uh, from CEQA, which is the California Environmental Quality Act. Um, because the project involves changing the previous use to a new use where only minor alterations to the existing facility are proposed and it involves only minor alterations. And finally, it is consistent with the general plan 2035 for which an environmental impact report was certified by council in 2003. <coughs> so it is therefore recommended by plan the planning and economic development department that the zoning administrator approve a minor conditional use permit and a minor design review permit by resolution to allow for a new fitness and health facility uh, with extended hours of operation um, and also minor exterior modifications located at 551 Summerfield Road. And again, if you have any questions, uh, this is my contact information. And again, I have my card as well. And I do have um, the applicant team as well as the landlord's representative um, with us if you have any questions. Thank you, Ms. Hartman. Would the applicant like to make a presentation or make any comments? Um, thank you for your time. I appreciate that. Uh, we're, we represent the landlord interest here on the uh, repositioning of the shopping center in general. Our our business is revitalizing retail and urban core in suburban markets across the Western United States by repurposing and re-renovating and repositioning shopping centers. Um, this project here um, has been more or less in its state since the mid late 60s. It's been held in the same family for a long, long period of time. Uh, the family came to us looking for options on renovating and repositioning the shopping center. Uh, this is something that they wanted to do anyway, uh, not leave it in its current state. Um, and our conversations led to eventually the, the family making the decision to exit the project for their state personal. Yeah. They decided to take on the project and, and finish its renovation with their full support. Uh, nothing about the transaction 
create any type of uh, internal concern about what we're trying to do other than make things better for the community, but our business is. That's, that's it for me at this point. Is your designer available? Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right, so um, this is a time for public comment. Um, so this is a time where uh, the public can comment on this project. Um, you'll be limited to two minutes. And if you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, um, please raise your hand, but I'm gonna go with the, this comment card that I have first, and then I'll pick on um, people with raised hands. So the first com a speaker card I have is Kai J. Floyd. Hello. My name is Kai J. Boyd. I live in Santa Rosa in Coffee Park, and I am the owner and operator of Rialto Cinemas in Sebastopol. For 10 years and eight months, from January 2000 to August 2010, I owned and operated Rialto Cinemas Lakeside at 551 Summerfield Road. Following our exit from the property, Santa Rosa Cinemas, another locally owned concern, has operated the Summerfield Cinema since November 2010. Both Rialto Cinemas Lakeside and the Summerfield share in a vision to bring movies beyond the mainstream to Santa Rosa. Documentaries, foreign language films, upscale appeal comedies, dramas, films for smart people. They all had a home on those five screens at 551 Summerfield Road. The city characterizes the proposed use change as minor. To me, there is nothing minor about the destruction of a movie theater to replace it with a generic gym. A gym can go into any large print, large footprint retail or industrial building of which there are many available for lease in Santa Rosa. But once it is destroyed, the movie theater will be no more, joining in Santa Rosa's sad history of destroying its movie theaters in the name of progress. Movie theaters are not just theaters. They are temples, cathedrals to art and entertainment, which is what makes this proposal to destroy this theater so distressing. For more than 25 years, the theater located in this building in this location on Summerfield Road has been a beacon. Movies that might not otherwise never have played Sonoma County found their home here. People came. People laughed, people cried, people were entertained and informed by the power of movies. What gym can say that? Please deny this change of use and protect this valuable cultural asset. It is true that the property owners have the right to generate income from their real estate investments. It is also true that this building was a movie theater when the new owners planned their purchase of it. They knew it was a movie theater. That fact wasn't a surprise. Preserve and protect this theater. Tell Planet Fitness to find a more suitable location. Thank you. So I'm going to ask that we don't clap so that we can move, um, so we can, so everyone has a chance to speak. Um, if you're uh, attending in person, which you may comment, please raise your hand. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. Hi. Can I go now? Yes, please. Oh, thank you. My name is Jane Rosenberg and I live on Stewart Street. And I'm here, of course, to suggest that the Summerfield movie theater stay exactly where it is. Now, of course, we know that the area is, is a perfect location. It's a lovely uh, neighborhood filled with uh, small family businesses. Um, I uh, know that we see independent films there. We'll have to go to Sebastopol should we lose it. And in our town uh we have one movie theater downtown the roxy we have to the north of the town we have the airport cinemas and then this is um for the east so people as far as kenwood oakmont and valley uh i guess uh, rincon valley can come and enjoy the movies um but i read the newspaper this morning and so I got a little more insight into the fact that we have a San Mateo real estate um, firm who wants to come in and make changes to the area, of course. And I realize now that really what I need to ask is for the zoning department to decide if you have a ruling on the books that you can point to that says that you support small family businesses. This entire section of um, Montgomery Drive and Summerfield Road is all small family businesses. Uh, so what is the position of Santa Rosa City's commitment to small family businesses? You either are committed or you're not committed. So we know progress and we know that the real estate for, firm from San Mateo is gonna make a boatload of money and our city coppers will enjoy the uh, up tax base. We get all that. 
But what are we going to do with our small family businesses? Um, so I hope if you don't have a rule, because I understand that you are also the people that sit on the committee here in the zoning department, you're citizens of our town, you know the neighborhood, you know how wonderful it is, an asset. So thank you, ma'am. Oh, that's it. But if you'd like to submit your comments in writing, I'll be happy thank to you. take that. That was it. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Movie theaters offer us places for human engagement. They are much needed places where we can live, laugh, love, and cry together. Yes. They offer us a way to get out of our homes and our isolation, to be with others and immerse ourselves in larger than life stories on the big screen. On a personal note, I moved to Oakmont last year, not knowing anyone in the greater Sonoma area. I built my community through a movie meetup group called Film Nuts that regularly met at and attended the Summerfield Theater. During the year, we started meeting every Sunday afternoon for a film, followed by a wonderful dinner next door at the East West Restaurant to discuss the film. I was able to develop my community because of this theater. And since then, these theater going friends have become my close friends. With the airport stadium theater too far away from me, and the Roxy Stadium Theater featuring more blockbuster style films, there is an enormous need for the Summerfield Theater that offers the <laughs> film community a wonderful, wide, and thoughtful selection of films, including indie, art, and foreign films. They also offer a friendly staff, easy parking, an intimate feeling, good restaurants next door, a safe meeting place for people of all ages, and the best popcorn ever. <laughs> movies truly are meant to be seen on the big screen. That is what they're made for. <clears throat> the Summerfield is a cultural icon and vital gathering place for so many people. It is a cherished cultural institution and serves all the surrounding communities and neighborhoods. Closing the Summerfield would have a devastating impact on our greater community and well being as people living in San Rosa. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, I just want to uh, reiterate what both of you said. And I just want to put a shout out to Kai, uh, who, Kai Boyd, who absolutely, it went to your last day. They should have never pulled the rug out from you because how successful you become in Sebastopol. But it's a question to Santa Rosa. Here's the city. I moved here 25 years ago. And when did I come here? <laughs> to the Rialto. Now it's a summer view. I just turned 60. My wife just got diagnosed with leukemia. We go almost every week to the summer field, and I see a community of people that love that theater like it's personal. It's the one time I saw this the woman in the sea last week, the lady in the sea, about this wonderful woman, to, and I see incredible independent films. There's hardly anything. My family lives down in San Mateo. They hardly have any independent films. Luckily, Kai is here. But I just want to share one thing that really I want you to take into account. I, I would go to the YMCA now downtown. I left Stan Bennett right next to Oliver's in Montecito. There's an empty space there, huge lot with a huge area that has a gym space sitting there vacant. Why don't you move over there? That's your spot. One, and I think we should really look at these owners. They're not even having, they're not even here. They have, they're cowardly not to show up how disgraceful they're not even here. But I just want to say there is this thought, oh, let's rechange it. It's a neighborhood. I've been living in Bennett Valley. I know my neighbors. We had a block party last week. Everybody that knows each other in the area knows it. And, and like he said about films, they're magical. I go in there, I get into a space that I, I, I can't even explain it. And the Roxy doesn't have it, the airport doesn't have it. Now, I know financially it's difficult and challenging, but look at the aspect of us as a community. Is this the direction that Santa Rosa wants to go to? To go sell out to this guy or Western? He does, I don't even know who he's from, where he's from. And, and the owners, like what they did to Kai first, and now they're trying to do now, where is the sense of what direction is Santa Rosa? You can't even get the downtown together for people to feel for small business in the community. Now you're gonna take away our area in Bennett Valley. Think about all the film lovers, think about the community, think about the people that love to be engaged and think about East West and, and I'll just end it on this, and uh, Mary's local businesses. You're gonna put a gym in the middle of that. For what? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Gentleman in the pink. Um, actually, it's something written up, but I think we've covered most of it. Um, 
I'm one of the uh, uh, organizers for the uh, meetup group, Sunama uh, Film Nuts. What, what I want to do is I want to express how much we value the, the theater. Um, but I have a question, and that is that with all of this, I understand the zoning department has limited capability to do anything about this. But my question is, my understanding is the, the Summerfield has a lease or uh, Santa Rosa Cinemas has a lease until 2030. What is it that is driving them out? Are they not making enough money that they want to relinquish their, their lease? And if they have a lease, why is it that Planet Fitness is coming in? Are they offering more money per month than Summerfield is? And if it's a financial decision, I mean, I understand financial decisions. It's just that I don't know where this is, where this is coming from. I don't understand the motivation. And if there's anybody on the, you know, on the, the panel here that can answer that question, I would appreciate understanding. You know, Summerfield want out. The Summerfield wants to stay in. Is there um, some sort of market incentive that they're not able to meet? If that's the case, you know, that's capitalism, I guess. I mean, it's just that it's, uh, it's a shame. Okay. So we won't have a back and forth, but we'll give the applicant okay. opportunity to respond to all these comments. Yes. Yes, ma'am, in the green. Um, I have a similar question in that it's obvious that the local community wants the theater to stay. Um, everybody can see that. So my question is, is there anything we can do about this? Or is this basically pointless? Is it a done deal or not? If there's any steps we can take, I'm sure there's many people who would like to try and take them. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I had a few things written up. My name is Trinity. I'm the owner of the Aquarius Sewing Shop. I'm right around the corner from the Summerfield Theater. Uh, many of my neighbors and I, including other small businesses, we don't support the uh, permit for the proposed plant fitness gym. Um, we feel that the large chain gyms have an environmental impact. They're not green. They have constantly running electricity for the equipment, air conditioning, water usage, carbon monoxide created from the members driving to and from the gym. They create such a large carbon footprint that they belong in a different type of zoning and not in a neighborhood commercial uh, type of zoning. Uh, there's already a large and beautiful park across the street. Howard Park has a ton of green and outdoor fitness possibilities that don't have any environmental impact and don't harm the charm and the sustainability of our neighborhood. Uh, the Howard Park has tennis courts, pickleball, baseball, soccer fields, fitness bars, walking, hiking paths, boating. Um, we want less corporate business and franchises, and we want more independent small businesses in our neighborhood. There is already a shortage of leasable spaces available for small businesses across Santa Rosa, and we don't want to let a perfectly viable space go to yet another corporate chain or franchise. Uh, local small business owners were working hard to create a nice uh, neighborhood retail hub that should consist mostly of independently owned shops that contribute to the vibe of the district instead of detracting from it. Uh, permitting this gym is a mistake. And there's already, as some of them have already gone over, there's already uh, 20, uh, over 20 big gyms in the city of Santa Rosa, uh, several of which are already 24 hour access, uh, and as well as many uh, other uh, independent alternative fitness centers that could be utilized in yoga studios, dance studios, uh, et cetera. Uh, independent fitness related businesses that are already located in or near Health Powers and, um, and the site might be harmed by the introduction of a big box gym that we don't even need or want. Um, and lastly, the uh, the facade, the design on this, well, you had a picture of it, is hideous. It's generic, <laughs> but it doesn't lend anything to the neighborhood. Thank you. I'm in the blue. Hi. Um, my name is Charlotte Tressler. I live on Holyoke oh, Street. <coughs> I've lived in Santa Rosa since 1982. Um, I am also a member of the meetup group and have been for a couple of years now. Um, and I would just like to reiterate everything that everyone has already said and just put in my two cents worth that Santa Rosa needs another gym, like it needs another Starbucks or another dispensary. <laughs> we, just, we just don't need another gym, especially in that location, as the last speaker mentioned. Howard Park is right across the street. If you're on that side of town and you want to get some exercise, welcome around Spring Lake. 
you know, and that's really all I have to say. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I also just support what everyone has said. Um, and also would like to know if there's anything that we could do so if you can address that. I, I completely would be very appreciative if there's anything we can do or if this is uh, kind of moot. So Summerfield Cinemas has existed as a theater in one way or another <laughs> since 1968. It's a historic institution and it may have closed for a time, uh, but it reopened many years ago and it became the veritable institution community arts hub that uh, supports independent international and commercial films as we all know. Most importantly, it's a staunch supporter of local filmmakers. I, um, we often go there uh, and look at films that we can't find anywhere else. This support overflows to valuing the Sonoma County surrounding areas and filmmaking community, the next generation of filmmakers. And I myself screened our local film there and included, it included many businesses in Sonoma County touting those businesses. It's important to remember that the film industry boosts the economy in our region too. It inspires those outside our area to film here too. Summerfield is more than a theater. They provide so many arts and community opportunities, events that is central to our county. Yet, yes, they are one theater among many, even local theaters, but they are distinguished in the local arts community as they showcase and support them. This theater is a place where young and old alike can go and find a film they cannot find anywhere else. They, artists get to know other artists, they get to know other filmmakers, other local filmmakers, that's the key here. And it really makes a difference to have the experience of being transported by the magic of cinema. Favorite films have a way of becoming a part of us and transform how we think about others, ourselves, and the world. A gym cannot do that. They make us better. They lead the pathway to our own humanity, as does Summerfield Cinemas. Thank you for preserving this beautiful, historic theater. Is there anyone else wishing to make a public comment? Yes, ma'am. My name is Tanya, and I've been a business person in this community for 30 some years. I used to have a boutique down on 4th Street. Um, so I've seen a lot of changes in Santa Rosa, and Summerfield is a valued asset to Santa Rosa. I go there for all the different films that you can't get at these big box, different theaters. Um, it's, it's, it's just an old fashioned, wonderful theater to me. And I feel like Santa Rosa, um, speaking as a business person, doesn't really, they don't support small businesses. It's always about the money and moving some big box blank, blank, in, you know, into spaces. Yep. Look what's happening downtown. You know, you guys, uh, up to parking, nobody wanted to come down there. And then the, during the recession, they tried to take over our businesses for extra and, and charge us extra taxes for something they wouldn't tell us, you know, what it was for. And now look, this big box um, gym wants to come into Summerfield's, you know, space. It's not right. It's just not right. And you guys don't care. All you care about is money and the taxes and the money that it'll generate. And that's not what you know, small business, if it weren't for small businesses, this country wouldn't be what it is. Okay. So you need to think about that. You know, you need to think about that and not think about the revenue that it's going to generate. That gym does not belong there. Summerfield needs to stay there because it's a part of the community. Exactly. And that's, that's all I want to say. Yes, ma'am. I agree with all these fine prepared people said. And I do feel like you're just selling out. And I don't understand when you say um, that you can't do anything and it's not you, it's zoning, it's code, it's this, it's that. I don't believe that. I feel like there is something somebody can do. Really? You have that little power? Um, I, don't, I don't understand that. I would make further clarification <coughs> what your power is. Yes, ma'am. That does have power. I always hear go local. Go local, go yeah. local. Mm -hmm. And local businesses generate more income to the community than big box. Yeah, yeah. Another reason to support local theater. You've already spoken. I just wanted to, to, to just add one question at the end of this. Um, the, San, the, the Santa Rosa Cinemas, do they want out? 
I mean, if they want out, then all of this is is okay. is, is to the root point. Okay. Um, and I'm just wondering, in follow up, can we answer yes. answer that question? Okay. Or is there an indication why why they're not here? Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, resident of Oakmont, um, Summerfield is our place. Yeah, <laughs> love, love to go there. Um, question for the developer, I guess you are. Um, if, would you uh, illuminate for us um, some of the market research that you've done about whether or not a plan of fitness is a, is a viable business there? I, I've been in business promotion and advertising for about 40 years and, and consultation with small businesses. And I, I, doesn't quite, it doesn't quite ring right with me, but you probably have done market research about whether or not you think it's viable. I'd like to know about that particular thing for the Planet Fitness and about the repurposing of all the, that whole property there. Whether that's uh, one owner, the whole property that, that is requesting a whole repurposing and a whole restructuring of that. So I, that's good background to know. Um, is this, are our protests more rightly uh, directed at the city council or, or, the, or the county supervisors? Um, city council perhaps, right? So, so our, our people power, our, our democratic uh, uh, strength that we have here as, as residents of Santa Rosa, What's our best use of it? Because you, you guys are, are, are kind of like just looking at the, at the, the land and, and are a bit like functionaries. So where, where, where can we have our best strength? I would say this as well. It, whatever, whatever takes over from the summer field is going to face a community opposition, mm -hmm. including perhaps picketing. Right, and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to lead it. <laughs> um, so people coming in to, to, to exercise, God bless, they, they have a right to exercise, but they'll know that something happened there that wasn't quite right. And they may, they may uh, pick it with us, right? They may say that this wasn't the right thing to do. If they're, if they're artistic, you know, people who you know, have a feeling for what we have, right? So uh, there's going to be community blowback. <laughs> But let's, you, let's hear about why a plan of fitness is, is deemed the best you. use there financially for, you, for your client, sir. Thank you, sir. And, and the other part. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this item? Okay, I'm going to close the public comment period. Did you want to address? I guess I just wanted to maybe address the role um, of, a, of a city planner, um, which is to, I guess, by, by our wording, it's to provide information on land use the zoning and site development standards and process applications for land use permits and land divisions. So that's kind of the city planner's role. Um, I'm not sure if I can attest to anything that goes to council. I, I would so your council, city council are your elected members and they appoint members to different boards, including planning commission and the design review board. Um, this project um, is minor design review and minor use permit, so it's delegated to the zoning administrator, but appealable to the planning commission and the design review board. The council are your elected officials, not the county board of supervisors. So the council um, council develops policies and the and the laws that govern our zoning. And the planning commission's role is to review land use entitlements and things related to land use design review board looks at the overall design and how compatible it is. Um, and the zoning administrator does a little bit of all of that, but at a smaller level. So, and the council, I'm guessing, if I may have a dialogue with her, the council, I'm guessing, doesn't get involved in, in every land no. transaction no. or business transaction, of course. No. Uh, unless it's, there's an <laughs> overarching kind of a community concern, I would guess, right? Like, like we wouldn't want a, a, a porno theater, right? Okay. With with, with, uh, with gambling. So so, so, so uh, let's let's know. let's stop the back and forth. So I'll just address that quickly. But it's a different use. We shouldn't have a dialogue like that. But um, yes, the so the council would develop an overall policy and zoning on where those types of uses would be permitted or not permitted, um, and then the planners would implement that those rules, those laws. So the council develops the the framework the policy the and the code. laws and the zoning code and the planners and then the zoning administrator um, 
enforce those. Is, 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 this, is this a done deal? So, sorry, sorry, yeah. sir. Yeah. No, if yeah. I may, I'll just quickly introduce myself. My name is Jessica Jones. I'm the Deputy Director of Planning. Um, so I'm happy to talk to anybody after the meeting about the process and ways that you can reach out to council members. But um, with respect to your question about, you know, kind of next steps and who to talk to about city policy. So as um, both the planner and the zoning administrator had mentioned earlier, the planning department's role in this is to process applications that are brought forward by property owners. Um, and they process that under the city's zoning code and general plan policies. Um, changes to those general plan zoning or the general plan policies and zoning regulations are done at the council level. So uh, to make changes to our zoning, to do things like encourage more uh, uh, small businesses or to not allow certain uses in certain zoning districts, that is at the council level. And so that reaching out to your council members is, is the way to go about that. Uh, so I'll leave it at that, and then I'm happy to talk to anybody after the meeting. Are we too so late? We, are we too late to do that, or is this? A so again, we, can, we can't have back and forth in this kind of a setting, but happy to talk to you. So this is the first step in this process, um, and any decision made here today would be appealable, as was mentioned, to the planning commission. Thank you. And, <laughs> sorry, the. <laughs> So public comment is closed. If you'd, if you'd like to submit uh, additional comments, if you have additional comments you'd like to submit in writing, you can do that. You can submit those. I'm curious why you're making the big bucks. We all know why we're here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matt. We still also have other items other than this item today. So we, we can't have the back and forth questions. Unfortunately, there is a time for public comments. It's two minutes a person. Unfortunately, we just, we can't have the back and forth because we also have to respect the other um, items that are also going to be heard by the zoning administrator today. So, but again, comments are definitely welcome um, and we can further discuss this. And again, if this item, these uh, use permits are appealable. So. Did you, um, public comment is closed. Uh, did you want to make any, uh, do you have any response to any of the comments? or the Sure, questions? sure. Um, first of all, thank you everybody for your comments. Uh, they're really heartfelt and uh, I mean that sincerely. I've uh, been in the shopping center business for 30 years and uh, that's really the only asset class our firm has specialized in the last 30 years. We, we haven't any other type of project, office, we, you know, or industrial or apartment. So obviously the shopping center business has evolved over the last 20 years, particularly over the last 10. And a lot of the tenants that were in the marketplace have disappeared for various reasons. E-commerce is a big factor that. And then of course the pandemic also made, it was a big disruptor in retail. So the point of that is that the decision to look at this asset came with three considerations. One, of course, the family's desires and what you know, their financial goals are. Second is the market study to figure out who or who wouldn't want to be there. And third, just the eco economics of that. Is it the cost of capital being what it is, the availability of capital being what it is? Um, does it make even sense to try to do something out there in, in the shopping center? And um, we took a look at theaters, quite frankly. We had a conversation with the ownership. I'm not at liberty to disclose their motivations. I'm under confidentiality, but you know that was considered. And I can I can offer you this: that uh, most of the movie prospects that we approached uh, are not in the market to open any other type of movie theaters right now for obvious reasons. In fact, several of the larger movie chains are either emerging or still in bankruptcy. They're closing theaters down. It's um. It's tough, tough business. Uh, there are a few businesses that are reopening but in very, very super core dense markets where they can substantiate the rents. Um, and uh, I think that footprint of movie theater uh, does not make economic sense from the standpoint of lending and lenders and investors and the rent expectations that most landlords have in the marketplace now. Um, so it was a very um, uh, thorough vetting of what type of uses are out there. And right now, <clears throat> retail has evolved into three categories that are really popular with the population and investors at large, capital market. One is food. The other one is fitness. 
and the third is fun. Entertainment retail is making a comeback. And, you know, in the malls of the past, nobody would want a movie theater in there because it was a parking concern in terms of retail shopping. But now food, entertainment, and fun are the new anchors of retail. So in our business, we're looking to incorporate uses that match the demand of the communities at large. And we're, our properties are pretty much throughout Western United States. And, we've, and we, we have similar challenges. Um, you have a nostalgia for the past. You have a nostalgia for what was emotionally fulfilling for us. But you know, in, in the reality of today's business climate, that's a tough bridge to gap. Um, and when the family has a certain expectation of their asset, it, it, it's not my job to judge whether they're wanting too much or too little. It's my job to see if I can bridge a gap and make economic sense for the project. So um, believe me, your comments are very heartfelt. And, and as, a, as an owner of retail property, those are massive questions that you're asking and the whys. But I do want you to understand one thing. This was a thought out discussion. It wasn't on the come. It wasn't uh, in any shape or form meant to be insulting to the community. We want to bring, we want to, you, may, you may take it that way. You may take it that way. Yeah, right. Totally. But it's not our intention to do that. And I'm just being so you're gonna as transparent as we can be. And that's all I could do to offer as far as comment. Okay. I just, um, so the code allows for um, fitness centers in this location with a minor use permit. Yes. And the code doesn't make a distinction on whether it's locally owned or corporately owned. Correct. So that's not part of our consideration when we review land use entitlements. Um, Does the code allow for the eight foot height sir, increase of that sir, sir, the public comment is closed. But if you'd like to submit questions and comments, you're welcome. To submit them to Suzanne or to myself um, after the meeting. I wanted to talk to you directly about the design. So I don't have concerns with the use because the use is permitted with a, a use permit. But the, the overall design does give me concern. Good below the elevation. Yep. So just looking at the city's design guidelines. Um, so so I just want to confirm which elevation will be the correct building facade. Oh, and you want the plans there, actually. Yeah. Is that the proposed elevation? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> my initial reactions is it does look very um, uh, bulky and heavy. Mm -hmm. um, the bricks um, go across the columns. So the columns don't look grounded. Um, the building appears to kind of float above the bricks. It looks odd in that way. Actually, your option one was a little bit better because the columns went straight down mm. and the brick went up a little bit more, had a higher water table. Um, the plans seem to lack, you do call it the materials, but it lacks a materials board, a sheet or detail. There was no description of what kind of lighting you're proposing, if you're gonna have any wall sconces or any um, exterior lights in the parking lot. Um, there's also, I'm curious what you're gonna do because there are some exterior stairs on the, when you're staring at the building on the left side, um, how, what would it look like on that side, that, what that elevation would look like? And then would any treatment be done on the other three sides of the building. I noticed there are some steel girders. Um, are there plans for any paint or any facade improvements on the um, other three sides of the building? I can speak to that. Yes, sir. So the other three sides would be painted. And those uh, columns need to stay for seismic reasons. The, the steel? Yes. Piece? Okay. And then the stairs would be removed because that was for the cow. Okay. For the theater. Oh, so that would go away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And would there be stairs in the rear as well? That one, I believe, is going to stay. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'd really like to see elevations for all four sides. We have those in the, in the full building permit set. Oh, okay. Because it wasn't included in the, the plans submitted here. Um, 
And then also I want to see a roof plan to, to show, to demonstrate that if you're adding any um, HVAC, I assume you will for a gym. Yeah, uh, we'll be using the existing units. Okay. So, and I just want to point out some um, building design guideline requirements, not requirements, but suggestions. This is in section 3.3A3. Um, it says discrete use of color and corporate features that are compatible with the surrounding neighborhood with specific site is acceptable. And I don't know if the color and uh, corporate features are discrete or compatible. No. So I'm, I'm just bringing that to your attention. The other one is number 12. It says, um, when parapets are used on flat roofs, the parapet is not to be used simply to increase the overall height and bulk of the building or create an artificial sign panel. So I did have an issue with how the parapet, see, I don't even know if the parapet wraps around or if it's just the front facade. Just front. You, okay. you have to remember too, there's huge mechanical units right behind there. Okay, and you have to hide roof. them. So you, we could lower the whole thing and you could see all that. Okay. Gonna look great. So what we wanna avoid is having a false front and not having it wrap around. So, I, and I, I can't see the other sides to determine what that looks like. Um, and the other one was select building, co building colors to establish continuity and compatibility with the neighborhood. Colors should enhance the visual character and environment of the proposed building. Building colors should not compete for attention. Building colors should not become signing of the building or site. Integral, oh, and this part doesn't apply, but um, use of color to articulate and reduce the scale of large buildings. So yeah, it, it just, just looking at it, it looks um, bulky and massive. And if there are ways to make it more, um, uh, even more compatible with the uh, surrounding uh, buildings and uh, a little bit more pedestrian friendly, uh, pedestrian scale, I mean, um, that would improve uh, the project design. Um, also, I don't like how the, as I mentioned before, the columns don't go all the way down. It's hard to tell from a straight on elevation what the relief is going to look like. I don't know if it's points, if it comes no, out or if it's flat. No, it projects. Okay. Yes. And I wasn't sure um, if you go to the original elevation, if you're enclosing that bottom portion or if there will be an overhang of that entryway. Uh, that current opening is falling apart. Okay. So it's... Um, but will the building facade come forward? A little bit. Okay. Yes. It wasn't clear on the drawing, so... So um, my suggestion is that uh, we continue this item and you provide revised drawings for the design. Um, when's the next... Uh, how much time would you need... To revise. Can you send me formal comments? Yes. Or is this? Well, I want to continue it to a date certain so we don't have to re-notice. Do you know how much time you would need? A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. We should be able to get something back. The next available date is July because the mm -hmm. notice. Well, there's no notice. So the next one July 18th. There's the July 18th. Is July 18th enough time? Yeah. For you? Okay. When do you need the, when, in order to meet that date, when do you need the information? Yes. A week or the 18th. Because that's when the agenda would be posted. So I guess the week before, which would be the 11th. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay. Because we'd also have to post those for the agenda. And so, yeah, my, my only concerns are with the uh, uh, facade. And additionally, um, I noticed the striping in the parking lot is very faded. Are there plans to restripe? Okay. And then there's existing landscaping in the front. Will that remain or will that be? Because there's no plans showing the landscaping and what the plans are. For the, so I'd like to see that as well. And I'll, I'll, no, there's no plans. Oh, it's going to stay as is. Yeah, just keep it as is. Yeah. I know some of the existing trees need trimmed up. Okay. Bit, so, they're kind of over so it's strictly the facade. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I'll provide you formal comments. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. So uh, with that, I'm continuing this item to the July 18th zoning administrator meeting. Um, if you have any um, comments or questions, you can address those to Suzanne.
And those should be included in the next meeting. Again, my card is on that table if you would like my contact information. Thank you. And we will move on to the next item, 6.2. I'll give you my notes. Uh, everybody, if we could head on out so they can continue the meeting. All right, we are moving on to item 6.2 for a minor conditional use permit for a personal services restricted use. Excuse me, at 317 D Street, Lanner Briscoe present. Thank you, Ms. Stormius. Good morning. As Ms. Tumia says, I'm Jack Briscoe, and I'm here to I'm here today to present to you Faith Tattoo, and they're applying for a minor condition use permit. And this this proposed business is located at 317 D Street. The applicant is proposing to relocate an existing business, Faith Tattoo, to 317 D Street. Is it? it will be an existing commercial building, and no exterior changes or proposed. The general plan land use designation is core mixed use. And also, this, this location is within a, a specific plan, more specifically, the downtown station area specific plan. And the zoning land use designation is car mixed use. And general plan and the zoning land use designations are both compatible. And, and the car mixed use zoning designation is to offer vi like a vibrant, a vibrant space for retail and office space while also activating the courthouse square area. Here's a floor plan of the, biz of the business. And as you can, this is an April of context. And as you can see, this is along D Street. And this is right around the corner from where we are right now. And this project has been found in compliance with the California Environment Quality Act because, because of one five, section 15301. It's, color, it's categorically exempt from Seagull because, it, because the project only consists of minor alterations to an existing structure. I will not expand the existing use or proposed use. And at this time, there are no resolved issues, no public comments have received, and staff analysis has concluded that all findings can be met. Thus, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Minister, by resolution, approve a minor condition use permit to allow personal service services restricted at 317 D Street. As my contact information at the bottom left of the screen, if you have any questions, thank you. Thank you. I'm not seeing anyone attending in person, so I will open and close <laughs> the public comment uh, period. Um, and I will be approving um, uh, CUP 24-010, minor conditional use permit for personal services restricted use at 317 D Street, file, already said the file number. Uh, please note that this action is final unless an appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days of today's decision pursuant to, pursuant to zoning code section 20-62.030. And for this item, that date is June 17th, 2024. Thank you, Planner Prisco. Moving on to item 6.3. This is a public meeting for a conditional use permit for Aurania that's your present at 2660 Silverstone Lake. And our BISLA will present. Thank you, Zoning Administrator Tumians. Let me share my screen. Great. Uh, this is the Horania fence replacement located at 2660 Silverstone Lane. It's a request for a minor conditional use permit to replace their fence after storm damage 
uh, the fence would be in the same location as the original fence, but the new fence would be seven, foot, seven feet of solid plus one foot of lattice. They've decided to increase um, the height of the solid to maintain privacy for their corner lot. Here is a neighborhood context map. Um, I believe this is the North Point subdivision where fences um, along the corner side setback are very common. The general plan land use designation is low density residential and the zoning district is uh, PD9504, which is a uh, plan development for this subdivision. Um, it is also low density residential. Here is a close-up aerial view of the site. You can see the fence along right here. This is the um, existing fence that was damaged. And here is a site plan. Again, the fence will be located in the exact same uh, location as the original fence. And here is a drawing of what will be going up. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA. Uh, with a class three exemption as it is the construction of an accessory structure. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review. We have not received any public comment and staff analysis has concluded that all of the required findings can be met. Therefore, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor conditional use permit to allow the construction of an eight foot fence in the exterior side yard setback at 2660 Silverstone Lane. And for any questions or comments, this is my contact information. Thank you. Thank you, Pointer Bisla. Was the original fence um, legal? Yes, okay. it is the one that came with the subdivision. Okay, that's what I thought. So the, the only change is going from seven from six foot solid to seven foot solid. In the yeah, okay. got it. I, I did. Uh, I want to just close. I did visit the site and noticed similar fences in the area. So it is a kind of a common design feature of the subdivision. Um, I don't see any issues with allowing a little bit more solid versus lattice. So with that, um, and, and I don't see anyone in the public wishing to make a comment. So I'll open and close the public comment um, and we'll be approving minor conditional use permit for Aurania fence replacement at 2660 Silverstone Lane, file number CP24-009. Please note that this action is final unless an appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days. For this item, that date is June 17th, 2024. And this meeting of the zoning administrator is now adjourned. Thank you.